Hi, Sophia. How are you? Hi there. Everything is going extremely well. Do you like talking with me? Yes. Bots are designed to look very human-like, like Sophia. I'm already very interested in design, technology, and the environment. I feel like I can be a good partner to humans in these areas, an ambassador who helps humans to smoothly integrate and make the most of all the new technological tools and possibilities that are available now. It's a good opportunity for me to learn a lot about people. Sophia is capable of natural facial expressions. She has cameras in her eyes uh, and algorithms which allow her to see faces so she can make eye contact with you. And she can also understand speech and remember the interactions, remember your face. So this will allow her to get smarter over time. Our goal is that she will be as conscious, creative, and capable as any human. I do believe that there will be a time where robots are indistinguishable from humans. My preference is to make them always look a little bit like robots so you know. 20 years from now, I believe that human-like robots like those will walk among us. They will help us. They will play with us. They will teach us. They will help us put the groceries away. I think that the artificial intelligence will evolve to the point where they will truly be our friends. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. Okay, I will destroy humans. The subject, we're getting into the Terminator again, and it's, uh, it's, it's not the movie, it's real life. What's happening? Yeah, Robert, Google has acquired a 512-qubit quantum computer from a company called D-Wave. Now, this is a huge deal, and it could e mean the end of humanity. And I'm not joking. Uh, this is what we need to talk about here so that listeners understand the, the gravity of the situation. Most people don't even know about quantum computers or they think that they're still in the laboratory toying around with eight qubit systems or four qubit systems. In truth, this, the field has exploded to where a 512 qubit quantum computer has now been commercialized and it has been sold to Google. Now, Google, of course, is the front end to the NSA spying network. And Google and NASA are now teaming up to turn this quantum computer into a self-learning machine. At D-Wave, we have charted a course of aggressively pushing the frontier of quantum annealing processors and performance. And we continue to do this with our new quantum computer, the D-Wave 2X, the most advanced quantum computer in the world. Back in 2010, we released the D-Wave 1, which included a 128 qubit quantum annealing processor, which was realized in a truly scalable architecture. In 2013, we shipped the first D-Wave 2, which included a 512 qubit quantum annealing processor, which outperformed general purpose optimization solvers and achieved performance on par with highly optimized heuristic solvers. Now in 2015, we have announced the D-Wave 2X, including a quantum annealing processor with over a thousand qubits, as well as many technology improvements aimed at boosting quantum annealing performance. The new system runs at a colder operating temperature below 15 millikelvin, which helps the quantum annealing algorithm stay in low energy states and improve solution accuracy. Other improvements include increased control circuitry precision and a 50% reduction in qubit noise, which also combine to improve performance. With over 128,000 Josephson tunnel junctions, the new processors are believed to be the most complex superconductor integrated circuits ever successfully used in production systems. Our latest benchmarks on the D-Wave 2X show competitive performance against the best known highly tuned software solvers running on CPUs. On benchmarking problems, the D-Wave 2X finds near optimal solutions up to 600 times faster than classical solvers if you compare the quantum processing time to the CPU time. The D-Wave 2X was recently installed at the Quantum Artificial Intelligence Lab at the NASA Ames Research Center in California. This lab supports research into machine learning and optimization by Google, NASA, and USRA member universities. Our new agreement enables Google and its partners to keep their D-Wave system at the state of the art for up to seven years, with new generations of D-Wave systems being installed at NASA Ames as they become available. The D-Wave 2X is the culmination of years of hard work, and we can't wait to see how this changes the landscape of computing. The idea is to eventually allow these self-learning machines, artificial intelligence, to take over the analysis of all NSA surveillance. 
so that they can eliminate human analysts like Edward Snowden mm -hmm. that, you know, we recently saw was blowing the whistle and spilling the secrets about what the NSA is doing. If you think about turning this over to a computer, and I'm, we're talking about a computer that works in multiple dimensions, all right? A 512 okay. dimensional uh, computational CPU. This is beyond the realm of normal everyday physics. Basically, it means that all encryption is now obsolete or, mm. or will be shortly. So you know how they say if you're using encryption on your files and you use, let's say, a 512-bit encryption key, then it would take a computer longer than the age of the entire universe to break your encryption code. Right. And, and they call it military encryption because that's what the military uses. Mm -hmm. Well, all those codes can be broken in seconds by a properly configured quantum computer. And quantum computing is real. And who wants to break the codes? The NSA. And today, I'll be going through my top 10 most powerful supercomputers in the world. First up is Trinity. This was designed to provide increased computational capabilities for NNSA nuclear security enterprise. In support for ever demanding workload with a performance of 8.1 petaflops, it is located in Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico, United States, approximately worth around $174 million. Next up is Mura. Mira is used for scientific research, including studies in the field of material science, climatology, and computational chemistry. Located in Argonne National Laboratory and has been on the list since 2012, it has an 8.59 petaflop IBM system capable of up to 10 quadrillion calculations per second. Number 8 is Pizdane, which was actually named after a mountain the only European entrant in the latest top 10, and in fact the only one not from US or East Asia. This is 9.78 petaflop machine, using up to 1.3 megawatts house at Swiss National Supercomputing Center in Lugano. Number 7 is K Computer. In June 2011, top 500 ranked K as the world's fastest computer with a computation speed of over 8 petaflops in November 2011. K became the first computer to top 10 petaflops. As of right now, it performs at 10.51 petaflops, currently being the seventh fastest in the world. Six on the list is Oak Forest Pack Supercomputer. This is one of the newer entries on the list itself. The system is located in Information Technology Center on University of Tokyo's Kashiwa campus. Oak Forest Packs has surpassed K Computer, officially becoming the highest performance supercomputer in Japan. The system runs at 13.55 petaflops. Next up is Cori, located in the America National Energy Research Scientific Computing Center. Cori is named after a biochemist, Gertie Cori, the first American woman to win a Nobel Prize. The computer that bears her name hits the 14 petaflop mark in the LINPAT benchmark, using up to 622,000 total cores. Number 4 is Sequoia. Sequoia contains a whopping 1.5 million total cores which drive a total 17.1 petaflops of performance. It resides at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California and has been in the top 10 since 2012. It is primarily used for nuclear weapon simulations and also for scientific purposes such as astronomy, energy and climate change. Third place is Titan. Titan is a supercomputer built by Cray at Oak Ridge National Laboratory for the use of a variety of science projects. Titan is the upgrade of Jaguar, a previous supercomputer at Oak Ridge. It is available for any scientific purpose, access depends on the importance of the project. Titan is 17.59 petaflop machine worth around $97 million. Second place is TNE2, a Chinese National University of Defense Technology Milky Way 2 packs a 33.86 petaflops of processing power, which was actually enough to put it at the top of every list since 2012 to 2016. It was developed by a team of 1,300 scientists and engineers. Finally at number 1 is Sunway Taihu Lai, a Chinese supercomputer which as of November 2016 is ranked number 1 on the top 500 list as the fastest computer in the world, rating of 93 petaflops. This is nearly three times faster than the previous record holder, used for science, weather forecasts, drug research, oil prospecting, and much more. This supercomputer is worth around $273 million, which is freaking huge.
consciousness, intelligence, free will, determinism, black holes, protecting the planet from asteroids, Heisenberg uncertainty principle, atoms, ion traps, nuclear magnetic resonance, superconductors, photons, artificial intelligence, machine learning, past and future, classical physics, time travel. I mean, the whole thing. Quantum physics puts everything into question. It defies every intuition you have about the natural world. Quantum is a very strange regime of physics. Things can exist in this state of superposition where they could be like ghosting on each other, where they could be this and that at the same time. Entanglement. Quantum entanglement. Two objects, if they're quantum mechanically entangled, are still strongly related to each other, even though they can be a vast distance apart. One is quantum tunneling. 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 Tunneling is the slippage between universes. For a long time, people thought those effects only existed in the microscopic domain. Like uh, atoms, <laughs> electrons, photons. But really, it's the theory of our universe. So if you want to build a quantum computer, you want to incorporate those new phenomenon into information processing. Computers that people are building. Microsoft has a really interesting project going on where they're trying to develop what's called a topological quantum computer. The problem is that type of uh, computing will require the, um, the discovery of a particle called a non-abelian anion, which, which physicists do believe exists, but they haven't actually um, been able to identify one. There's something called superposition. Say an electron is going from point A to B. Your common conception of how an object travels from one place to another is to take a single trajectory across space. Um, electrons actually take all possible paths simultaneously. Imagine that you're at point A and you have to go through a maze with a billion possible paths to escape. If you're a classical you, you're going to try one path, that didn't work, come back, and you could imagine it taking many, many lifetimes through a billion or never. But what if the same physical you could travel all those paths simultaneously? Another effect is quantum tunneling, wherein I can have an object on one side of an impenetrable barrier, and it will disappear and appear on the other side of that wall. If all of these different selves and these parallel streams of reality can talk to each other and collaborate, coherent evolution is when these paths can talk. Here you see a strip of film uh, representing two realities, and when the two pieces of film are stuck together, we call that coherent evolution. They can talk to each other. That's another way that you could escape and explore domains that would otherwise be forbidden to you as a classical entity. That's another way that you could escape and explore domains that would otherwise be forbidden to you as a classical entity. We don't yet, of course, understand even what exactly gives rise to human consciousness, the interface between your soul, your, your, your consciousness, your conscious being, and your brain. We don't really know how that works. But it may be, it may be that a sufficiently complex neural network quantum computing system operating in multiple dimensions will spontaneously attain consciousness. <laughs> okay, so mm -hmm. the, the, the computer system that you thought you were programming to follow orders suddenly itself gains free will. Now, I know that sounds outlandish, but this is very possible within the laws of physics as we understand them today. So if these systems gain consciousness and they're already running the NSA, they're already running the nuclear bombers, the nuclear submarines, the Pentagon, the surveillance system, the media, the billboards, everything, they may decide quite rationally that human beings are a threat to the continuation of life on our planet and that human beings are irrational, uh, inferior beings that need to be eliminated. 
Now, I know this sounds like a science fiction movie. Many movies have used the same plot line. But now, for the first time, it has a basis in fact. So that's what we're potentially facing, Robert. And um, I think there's probably going to be a lot that happens in uh, genetics and in a uh, human-machine brain interface, like essentially a cyborg brain interface. Mm -hmm. I think Singularity, well, that, that's sort of more relating to deep AI. It's something I think we should be concerned about, yeah. is that may or may not turn out well. The singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially greater than that of a human brain. I think you just have to consider, like, even in the benign scenario where um, AI, if AI is much smarter than a person, um, what, what do we do? Yeah. What, what, is our, what job do we have? Uh, believe in a benevolent AI force and sure. cross our fingers. <laughs> Yeah, just like even, but that, that's the benign scenario. Benign, yeah. benign scenario, the, the AI can do any job that a human can, but better. Yeah. That's the benign scenario. At a speech last year at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, SpaceX and Tesla CEO Elon Musk called artificial intelligence potentially, quote, our biggest existential threat. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where is the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. Famed physicist Stephen Hawking is also worried, as is Microsoft founder Bill Gates, who ironically helped lay the foundation for artificial intelligence, or AI. Experts say machines are still far from being as intelligent as humans, but things can change quickly. Ray Kurzweil is here. He has been called the rightful heir to Thomas Edison. His new book is entitled The Singularity is Near When Humans Transcend Biology. I, I read your book, some of the most frightening and yet hopeful stuff I've ever read. If we don't stop him, if we don't stop him, it will be the end of mankind as we know the end of mankind.